Manor Lords is an upcoming medieval city builder created by Slavic Magic releasing to early access as of the 26th of April and I've had the pleasure of playing it for over 50 hours now and learning its mechanics. Hello my name is Midgeman and this game is a childhood dream come true for me. Staring across the fields and houses fills me with a childlike wonder dreaming of swords and chivalry. However, like my actual dreams, this game is filled with some elements that might confuse you at first glance, like a clown in a bathtub. So let's lift the confusion and put those clowns to bed. No, we're not talking about glitches. Here are 10 things I wish I knew before I played the Manor Lords Early Access. Please remember that all of this was taken from a press build, which is slightly behind where you're at with your current game, and that the game is work in progress, so features are likely to change. Tip 1. Burgage Plots One of the most unique and frankly beautiful elements of Manor Lords are the highly adaptable burgage plots on which you can build houses. One of the first elements you'll need to master is how these slots work, because as much as people don't like to say it, in some cases, sometimes size does matter. When it comes to burgage plots, different upgrades produce different yields depending on the size. Furthermore, why waste space if you don't need to in certain areas? See, it works both ways. So here's the rundown. If you require vegetable patches or orchards, the bigger the better as the yield for the produce is affected by the size of the plot. For artisans, the size doesn't really improve the yield unless that plot has more than one family in it by using the extra space upgrade. Finally, goat pens and chicken coops don't seem to be affected by either the size or the amount of families in the plot. But if somebody else learns any different, be sure to reach out in the comments. Tip 2 specializing settlements. There's a technology tree in Manor Lords known as development points. This tree and its upgrades are tied to the regional level of your settlements. You gain these points through leveling up your settlement, but here's the catch. Currently in this early access, each settlement is limited to six upgrade points, so you have to specialize your towns. I highly recommend you look to specialize your towns by either the rich resource yields located within them, such as clay or iron mines as they can be made unlimited with certain development upgrades, or by the fertility of the soil around you, which you can check with the construction tab. Don't be caught out like I was in my first playthrough, where I locked myself out of some pretty important resources for my main city to thrive. Tip 3. Logging Zones Logs and timber are a key resource in many of the artisanal and, more importantly, construction chains within Manor Lords. Currently, within the early access, there is only one way to store logs, which is within the logging camps themselves. They're capped at 28 logs. Whilst you rarely need more than three workers cutting down the trees, you will need more camps to store forested trees, otherwise your construction and production will hit a huge brick wall. Or should that be a timber wall? <laughs> I like to set up forestry zones, grouping logging camps in groups of four, and assigning three logging workers to every four camps. You can then combo this with your foresters, and your sawmills, or your charcoal camps, or your woodcutters huts. But trust me, if you start thinking about extra logging camps, you'll thank me later. Tip 4. Dedicated Logistics Workers Dedicating workers for logistics by both assigning them to granaries and storehouses, as well as directly dedicating workers to stables to guide oxen is a must if you want your industry to function effectively. Furthermore, assigning oxen directly to certain industries will make sure that the industry is never without heavy transportation. And further furthermore, families working on storehouse and granaries will open market stalls to aid distribution of goods, which can get really limiting if you rely only on those people working directly in the industries and sometimes reduces the amount of labor available for those industries. Tip 5. Crop Rotation and Fertility Fertility is one of the most important factors you'll need to manage when getting to grips with the farming in Manor Lords. For starts, Make sure you turn on crop rotation. I recommend only planting in a field where you can get at least 50% yield for a crop type. For every two seasons that you plant, you'll need to rest the field anywhere between one and three seasons depending on droughts. Keep in mind that changing the crop type reduces fertility loss but does not increase the fertility of the soil. To increase fertility, you'll need to leave a field fallow. This fertility growth can be increased further by letting animals graze in the field through the fence-up perk. Tip 6. Armed Units 
In the early access, no matter how many settlements you have, you are currently capped at 6 units of militia. However, you can go over that cap with retinue, and each region you settle can have a mana allowing you to go over that cap. Just make sure you don't disband the militia, or the retinue that you've created will take up the slot that they once held against the cap. Tip 7. Bartering and the Shoe Economy after you specialize your settlements, you'll need a way to share goods between the settlements and in the current early access build, the only way to do so is through pack stations that allow you to trade one good for another, such as grain for linen. Sadly, you cannot currently use a region's wealth in this system, but there is an easy substitution, shoes. Once you have a cobbler, they'll be able to create shoes which make an excellent substitute for other trade goods that are far more vital to a settlement and harder to produce. This is because shoes currently have a high trade value, but are relatively easy to produce using leather or hides, which is a resource most settlements have. Also, once you have a cobbler, you'll probably find yourselves with thousands of pairs of shoes lying around anyway, so let the shoe economics commence. Tip 8. Buying more oxen. As I said earlier, oxen are vital for carting heavy goods. I currently recommend buying one oxen for every 10 families that you have in a settlement until you get to around 200 families and then I recommend reducing it to one in every 20 families. Also, always buy fresh oxen if you require them for a specific industry such as farmhouses if you've teched the plow upgrade, lest you ruin your already active production chains. Tip 9. Mana Construction Manorial construction is a very work in progress feature for start, so don't try to use it to wall your cities. That's a plan mechanic and it will break your cities if you try right now. And that's also not the intention for the walls for the manor. Furthermore, currently editing the construction of your manor will cost you the resources again to rebuild it entirely. And you cannot destroy your manor once it's placed, only edit it. So be careful about the placement and don't ruin your beautiful cities, unless you're okay with cutting them off from the entire world and most of the production inside them failing. <laughs> Just be patient and let Slavic Magic cook on this one. Tip 10. Resetting the hot bars. Finally, you'll notice from time to time that resources on the top bar will change, and sometimes you'll lose the ability to see resources outside of a building material breakdown, which is highlighted when you've opened the construction menu. I found the fastest way to reset the top bar to see all resources is to open and close the development tab. I don't know if there's an actual hotkey or function to do so, but this is the fastest way I've learned to do it. That's it. That's my list of 10 tips for this build of the Mana Lords Early Access. If you have any tips of your own for other aspiring Lords of the Mana, please let me know in the comments. Or, in the comments. or if you don't have anything to say, consider leaving an emoji down below. The engagement really helps the channel grow. Speaking of growing, I'm trying to hit 20k subscribers by this year. And if I hit a fraction of that, say 15k by the end of May, and if this video hits 1k likes, I'll give away 5 copies of Mana Lords to people in the comment section. So, thank you so much for watching. I've been Midgeman, and I'll see you in the next video. Wow, wasn't that fantastic? You've just had the utmost imponderable joy of watching a Midgeman video. Thank you to my editors, Foxy and Dax, for being absolutely wonderful cherubs and helping make all of this content. And thank you to the channel members. You know who you are, you wonderfully sexy toast people you are. Why not check out this video? It's been picked for you by the YouTube algorithm. Goodbye!